Welcome again you Fused Glass lovers. Glad you could join me for this seventh video. This is Deborah here on the Costa Blanca in sunny Spain and this video, in this video I will show you how to make these gorgeous pendants. I hope you watched the last video which showed the, the starting process for these pendants and now we will look at shaping, cutting, grinding and applying the decals. So if you want to know how to make them, please watch the previous video and the ones before that if you want because they all follow on from one another and then keep watching. So we'll start with the blue and orange one from the previous video. It's this one here which you'll see how we made that in the previous video using the blob technique. Okay, I've decided with this one we're going to cut the edges off there and a little bit off the top and the bottom so it's not such a big piece going to cut off the excess and we'll have just the main bits of the background to put the decal on so we'll have a good scenery good scene there okay so i'm just going to mark it with a sharpie so that i've got a guide when i'm cutting you can do a lot by eye i guess going to wobble about a bit but we'll do our best so i'm going to cut it off there and probably there Oops, there. And across there. Don't worry about these pieces that we're, we're cutting off, we're going to be able to use again. So let's go to my Dremel drill and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are, water. I'm just going to put a little bit more in there because I'm off to the side a little bit, it's not quite so deep as in the centre. Dremel, I'm just going to dip it in anyway to make it a little bit wet. And you've got your mask on, you've got your glasses on. Just to get it up quite to a high speed, it makes life a lot easier. And I'm going to start by cutting the across. Just get your line first before you go any deeper. The water will settle in there which will help cool the uh, cutter and um, it will be a guide for you. Then you can start to cut it deeper. Now I'm actually resting my hand on the uh, thing. It helps me get, give me a better line. not cool enough you can just switch it off and dip it in the water I don't think it's necessary but it just depends how heavy handed you are try and make sure you're cutting the same all the way along the line if not it will just 
Karte geöffnet habe. Okay, das war der Arzt. Hey, komm, wenn ich will, wie er will. Hier geht's noch für die Bild abwerben. So, ich hab's finish. There's the piece there. It's going to go in the grinder. I didn't quite cut that at the right angle. That's what I mean about trying to be at right angles. But we're going to use the grinder anyway. Now I just want to show the importance of wearing. This is why it's important to wear your mask. Because you think in water, it's, you're not going to get any dust. You do. If you look, you can see all the dust on the tap that would be you would be inhaling that if you didn't wear your mask so it's important to wear your mask the little bits of glass i mean you could maybe put something in here to catch these bits of glass if you wanted to but i'm going to get the, the bits of glass out because we can use those again and any little bits very little glass needs to be wasted when you do infusing um, and we're going to go back to the grinder so here we are back in the studio with the piece that we've cut and then all these little pieces. Now what I'm going to do is keep these. I've got a little pot here that I put the bits in. Okay, so over to the grinder. Right, mask is back on, glasses are on. Protect ourselves from that dust and bits that might fly off your piece you don't want to go in your eye. But this is the grinder, this is a Kirstall 2000, it wasn't very expensive. It's got water in it and it does come with a little attachment that I could put on to squirt water on if I was doing other stuff as well but I find it suitable quite suitable like this it's a little lever here that's to hold that down but it's a tight fit anyway so you don't really need it and this is your splash guard so on. okay here's our piece here so we're going to grind it and get it into shape we've got our marks there they're not they're not dead on, are they? Because um, I did them just by eye. Uh, but you do get used to grinding your pieces. You do get used to looking at the shape uh, and working out what needs to be done. So we've got this funny side here. So I'm going to start by getting rid of that. So you can see, it's good to look at it, these pieces from both sides because then you can see, you know, when it's not on the line and you can see that that's got a bit of coming up What needs to come up at the middle? Okay, well you get the idea, so I'm going to show you when I'm near to the end. Two minutes later and I'm at this stage. So we've got quite a nice shape there. The only thing is, uh, I generally don't like the square corners. So we're going to try. We're going to take the corners off, get them even, and then we're going to put a bit of bevel on it. So I like to look at it top and bottom. Slightly out of the line of hair, just need to take a little bit off of the bottom. Um, let's have a look at it from the back. See, there's just a little bit of, you know, nobody's going to notice it when it's done anyway. But it's just that I like to get it to get it right. Now it's quite chunky, so this is why I like to put a nice bevel on. That's a bit sharp that corner then. Sometimes when you're doing these, it's hard to explain, but sometimes you think that the shape isn't right. Sometimes it can be just that it needs the, a bevel putting on it to, to make it look better. You know, you're, you're looking and you think, I don't know why that's not quite right. I, I'm not explaining this very well, I know. It's something you get, I suppose, from experience. But just consider putting a bevel on 
that very well but it on the camera but it's just moved off the top edge and then I'll do it on the bottom though you don't have to I'll do it. scenic background just awaiting the decal so the next stage is fire polishing to make it all smooth so this has come out of the um, kiln now and it's had the fire polish you'll see lovely round edges where I beveled it and they've softened on the fire polish fuse and the same on the back so after a lot, a lot of deliberation deliberation I've decided I'm going to use a white decal on this and what I'm going to do is use that tree but I'm going to I'm going to cut it down the middle and I'm going to put that half on this side and that half on this side so it's like half a tree on either side at different heights. And then I'm going to decide what I'm going to put in the middle. Just get my water out. So I've got a shallow dish here with some warm water in it. I've got a few bits in, try not to have any bits in there. You don't want anything that's going to contaminate your decal. I don't think they're going to hurt because they're quite big bits anyway. So it's not quite, I don't want to split it. Just give it a little bit longer. Decide where you want to put it. I don't want that white bit on the bottom, I've just noticed. Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to have that one a little higher. Like this one. A little lower a bit on the bottom again now although these are pink they do fire white oops They're starting to stick and now you get a certain amount of time to move them about and then they do start to stick now I decided with this one I wasn't going to have it a sea and sky called artistic license you can do what you want they're your pieces you do what you want 
uh, because I didn't really have anything suitable at the moment that I thought would go. I have got some C ones, but I just didn't think they would go nice on that. So this is going to be a blue field with a sunset. And I've decided I'm going to add these little birds flying around up there at the top. Now these are a different decal. You've got to make sure your decals are high fire or low fire. You've got to know what you're doing. I don't actually know which one this is, so it's going to be a bit of uh, a trial here. I can't even tell if it's got still got the thing on it, but we'll put it in the water anyway. It probably has. The water's cooled down by the now, by the way, but it will still work. So I'm going to put those at the top, and at the bottom we're going to have a nice butterfly, which is is bigger than that, but it's nearer to the camera that's taking the picture. Is my view on it. As I say, it's artistic license, handmade, and you have the final say in what goes. Okay, see, look, the water's nearly cold and that's come off quite easily. So we're going to have those up there. Now there's one thing that could go wrong with this. I'm going to fire it on the schedule that you get for the white decals. Is that these birds could end up losing their shape because they're so so delicate anyway that an overfiring could blur them. But we'll see. I'm not too worried because we can always take them off and put something else on there. So when I fire this, I'm going to um, fire it along with all my other pieces that will be in the other videos. This is why I, how I have to make the videos, because I don't want to put the kiln on just for one piece. So uh, all the other pieces that are discussing will be in the other videos will be fired along with this. So I'm going to leave those overnight to dry. I always leave them overnight. They probably dry quicker than that, but I prefer to leave them overnight to make sure they are totally dry. Just got to take the protective cover off this, I forgot to do it. Best to do it when it's dry before you soak it. Otherwise you're going to have this problem. Oh, oh took off half my birds. Okay, found some more birdies. Let's take the protective coat off first. Go. As per the instructions, put it into soak. So now we have even more birds. I'm going to put that to one side now. We'll go on to the next one. We'll add the decal to that one and all the other ones out of the bunch. And then they'll all go in the kiln together and I'll show them you at the end. So this one here, I've decided to make it an oval shape, I prefer. I've also gone towards the top to draw the oval because um, I like the red at the bottom but I prefer the blue at the top and one of them had to go a bit to the side so it's not too big a pendant. It's hard to judge with the camera how big it is but it, it is actually not too big if you can tell by my fingers. I had a template here that I've used to draw the, the circle and I've just used a sharpie I've just picked which part of you know that I want and I'm liking I'm liking this bit up here it's like a stormy sea I love this bit here it looks like pebbles and stones and rocks so I'm quite optimistic about this one so that's what this one looks like now it's being cut out using the Dremel it's finished off on the grinder into the vinegar and water to stop devitrification and then into the kiln for the fire polish and the softening of the edges ready for the decal. It's interesting for people who watch these videos to see just how much work does go into making a pendant of this type 
Um, it'd be nice if people who buy it could appreciate the time that goes in, but as we all know with handmade stuff, you put in a lot more, much effort, a lot more effort than uh, people realise and people are prepared to pay for, I think. So you have to do it a little bit of um, as a passion. So ready for the decal. I think I'm going to put this tree on here. I think once it's on, the colours in the back of this will will show, will pop. I'm going to take the grass with it as well. Okay, so Okay, so this one I'm going to put this So, I'm just going to pop that in more water. Warm water's better, but tends to go cold pretty quick anyway so it does work in cold water make sure it's that you this is you your cabochon's clean this is clean anyway but just clean it with a bit of uh, alcohol or nail varnish remover something like that just to get rid of any grease that's on there you want you want your pieces really clean when you're applying decals <clears throat> Because they can be a little bit te temperamental. Okay, here we go. It's not quite coming off easily. I'm going to put it a bit further down because I don't want to cover over that beautiful piece there. Um, put it up there it'd be too high if I put it there it's right over it so we're just going to put it a little bit lower that's going to look lovely don't know if you can see it probably not on the camera but believe me it does create depth and I'll be able to show you hopefully certainly when it's fused but let me just dry it make sure there's no bubbles in there maybe you can see depth in it I'm not sure but see how that that blue in the background really really shines out now what you can do with these after as well which you might do with this one I've got some gold PBO paint uh, which I can you can outline some of the edges in the gold if you've got a nail art brush which is a very fine brush uh, and that can look nice as well Okay, so that's going to dry overnight before I put the kiln on, so I'll just leave it over there with the others. Okay, so what so... happened here, basically, after trying the decals on some of the other pendants, I thought I quite like this tree on okay, look, this original pendant. That's why I'm taking this edge. decal off and trying what the tree one night is like on there. I'll put it back on there. I might put it back on if I don't like the other one. But anyway, that's there for now. Right, let's have a look at this then. think Ooh, decisions decisions quite like it I think I prefer the other one I think that just blots out the background too much I think that needs like a bright orange background which I did do one like that once and it looked like a gorgeous sunset behind it so I'm just going to put that back on the it's just floating on the water that is and we're going to get this one so I'm going to go with this one. Okay, here we go, here we go. So we decided down there, didn't we? So we could, yeah, that's better. Yes, you can see more of the background. I'm happy with that. 
So the decision was, I like the original decal, uh, but I just wanted to try to see what that one was like. Nice, nice. So again, we'll come back to that one at the end and on to the next one. And the same with this one. I'm going to do a oval with this one, a slightly smaller one because the sides haven't turned out too well on this and I think if we just position that right we can just get a, a nice circle there so I'm just going to mark that and then I'll get back to you so that one's marked ready to cut on the grind I've got a little ball on the side there which has uh, marred my cutting line but I'm sure we'll get past that but I don't even know how that got there uh, but yeah that looks looking good as well so that's been cut on the Dremel, grinded on the glass grinder, soaked in vinegar and water and then put in the kiln on a fire polish and is ready now to have the decal put on it. Okay, let's give this a try. I'm going to put See those, those leaves there? I'm, I'm going to put those on the side because they quite go nicely with the colours that are already on there. And I'm going to, I've got these nice fairy decals here. I'm going to put a little fairy on the side. And I think that enough of the background will shine through from that. So we're going to give it a try anyway. The problem is... I can't remember if this was high fire or low fire, so I'm going to have to do a bit of research on the internet and find out and whether this is high fire or low fire and hope it works out. But we'll give it a try. Backup plan, as I couldn't decide totally what to do. We're going to give those a try, but my backup plan was my second choice, which is that fairy with all that nice delicate stuff there would have looked nice on there so that's if that those fail then I'm going to use that on there so cut these out I'll give it a little bit of shape to match the pendant so it, it just lies a bit flatter it's going to go in the water to soak and this one it's got a bit wet that's why it's a little bit wrinkled, but it should still be okay. So put those in to soak and put you on pause and come back. Just cleaning it with a little bit of nail varnish remover. Okay. Oh, it's a bit lighter than I thought. I don't think we're going to see those leaves. I'm going to see that one, but I don't think we're going to see the others. That's a bit of a shame. See you know what that looks like if you put it on white? Yes. It does seem to be get a bit lost, doesn't it? Let's see what the fairy looks like on there first. I think you can you can still see that it is a type of leaf on there. I won't, I won't to stick that on too good yet. Fairy pendants do sell quite well. Now I've actually got a feeling there's another layer on that that needs to come off, which does happen with the decal sometimes you get the base layer and then you get a top layer and yes it has so I'm going to take that off I'll have to put it back in the water I think And again, just putting that black on there 
has made the uh, background pop, background colours pop. So just to make sure you've got rid of all the air bubbles. Just going to get all that gunge off there with a bit of water. Scratch it off gently. And the next one, to jog your memory, this is what it was like in the previous video. And that shows how we made it, etc. And that is how it's, it's come out. Like now it's been in for its fire polish, ready for a decal, or even just sell as it is. Don't forget, if you put a decal on and you don't like it, or it doesn't fire very well, it's quite easy to just scrape the decal off using your grinder or a Dremel and refire it, repolish fire it. Uh, sell it as it is or try a different decal so don't get stressed if your decals don't work out or you don't like them when they're on because um, they, it's easily remedied okay so you have to work with what you've got really and you end up with lots of little bits like this especially when you you cut you know things in half like the tree and that but anyway I've got these colored trees here which are nice they don't fit completely on there so what I'm going to do and I think it would look odd just to put the center of it on there it's hard to tell I mean I could just do it I suppose if it didn't work out I could just scratch it off and start again it might look okay with it cut off it might not but what I think what I'm going to do is cut it in half and have half of it on that half and then I've got some little parrots here and I'm going to put those sort of overlay them as if they're on the, the branch have a look see how it goes if there isn't a branch there for them to go on I'll just cut a bit of black off something one of the other ones let's give it a try anyway These were actually a set for uh, particularly small ones. These were a set that for, for earrings. But, but you, obviously you don't have to use them for earrings. Again, these are low fire. You can get low to, high, low to high fire as well. So you can get low fire, low to high fire, which means you can fire them at low or high. And then you get high fire. <clears throat> so you just have to be careful. Right. Okay. When you try and put decals on a curved edge, they they won't go. They won't stick because they're not curved. But they will fuse onto the glass when they get warm. They'll just soak down on it, and the glass softens, and the decal goes into the glass. And then when the glass cools, it hardens, so the decal is actually in the glass. Okay, we'll just have a, we're just going to have a look, see what these parrots look like on there. Which they would have looked quite nice actually, look. They do look like they're in the tree and actually the, the tree does pop out a little bit now. So we'll give it a try. So I'm putting that deck out on top of that deck out and hoping it's going to be okay. That's quite nice, so we'll keep that. The next one is the one indicated by the arrow from the previous video where we showed how it was made. This one, I think and we'll here you can see what I'm going to do we're with it. We're just looking now. at this when I put this on, and it, the, the colours and the shine in that really pop as compared to it like that. So just going to have a nice lovely oval shape here so 
not going to grind it I'm going to cut it out with a Dremel while it will probably involve a little bit of grinding as well but um, I'm going to cut it out with the Dremel and we can use those other bits in other pieces this is how it came out after cutting grinding and fire polishing I think it's calling out for a nice tall fairy maybe her This one indicated by the arrow, I've lost a little bit of the video footage of this. I did say I was going to make it in a into a circle, but then when I was actually grinding it, I decided to make it into a diamond shape, which is, as you'll see in the rest of this video, no decal added to this one because I thought it was quite nice the way so it was. So this one I've decided I'm going to uh, grind it in. And this is how it's come out. It's been grinded into a diamond shape and with a flat top there to put the bale so that it doesn't stick out either side and then soaked in vinegar and water and fire polished so that's ready to add a bale to uh, for sale and vivid blue base and the zebra on the top which is herringbone which has come from a piece similar to this, hence the reason it's so thick in the middle. It was put that way down and because it, it has spread out, you can see the valleys in the centre have opened up to allow you to see the colour of the dichro underneath. And that's the key to it really, that's the key to getting dichro on top of dichro and being able to see the dichro underneath which I hope my videos has explained that so the next one just to remind you the one at the top here was how it was so this one here and this is what I'm we've done to, it to take now. it to the grinder now and we'll grind it uh, just grind off the decroit bits that are oozing out Okay, I wanted to keep this wet so that you can see, um, having taken off the decroit round the edge, how it's come out. If I'll dry, it, I'll dry it off now so you can see what I mean. I wanted to show it you wet. Oops. Okay, so you can see it goes all cloudy until it's fire polished again. That will be remain cloudy. Um, you can hand polish using different thick thicknesses or coarseness of sandpapers but it's just easy to fire polish again. Now this is the tree that I put in the water, took it off and then put it back in again. So I'm just going to put it back in the water again, leave it for approximately a minute and I'll be back with you. I'm going to uh, get the air bubbles out and dry this off and then I'm just going to snip that bit off at the bottom. So where it folds over on your bevel, it, it's not going to lie flat, but it's it's okay. It will just soften and droop onto there as it gets warmer in the kiln. Just make sure that the any air in those will just come out at the sides. It's the air bubbles that are trapped in the middle you've got to be careful of. So, so I rounded up, that one off one. on the grinder, soaked it in vinegar and water compound and fire polished it and I mean I'm quite liking it as it is. I'm loving the gold bronzy effect of it uh, and the little cluster in the middle. So 
so I left it the way it was. The observant ones of you will notice that I'm missing one of the pendants here that we uh, prepared in the previous video because I haven't decided what to do with it yet and this video is already long enough so I'm going to include it in the next video which will also be applying decals to some of the other cabochons that I've got um, some of which turn out absolutely unbelievable so please stay tuned for the next video so here we are the final pieces from those blobs that we started off with to these gorgeous scenic individual oops pendants trying to tip it up then for you to see. So if we start with this one. They're always better in real yeah they're always better in real life. Decroit glasses and when you try and photograph it or be Turn the light off. No. That's the problem with the quick. It's so hard to catch the beauty of pieces. I'm tipping it up to get as much daylight as I can. I hope this gives you an idea of how beautiful they are. I'm not saying anything because I've used all the superlatives that I can, really. So I'll just show them you. Dealt with it no better than I. The leaves, I lost the leaves on there and there, but the edges of the leaves remained and the main leaf is fine, so I think it achieves the effect. And then these are just the two that I'm going to keep as they are. So please visit me my next. I've already started recording um, the pendants with decals that I'm going to include in the next video. Because whilst I was making these, as I say, I made a whole batch that I could fire at once in the kiln. And they've turned out really nice. So look forward to seeing you my next video. Please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, share, all that sort of thing if you like this video. Thank you.